Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Branley. And I'm Alicia Coakley. Every member of the church has a story to share, one that can instill faith, invite growth, and inspire others. On today's episode, we're going to hear how finding his why led one elder to finish his mission and start a new one. Welcome to Latter-day Lights. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Latter-day Lights. We're so glad that you're here with us today. And we have a special treat for you today, another podcaster. His name is Nathan Givondian. And I said that right, right? You got it, yeah. Perfect, okay. Um, Nathan, welcome to the show. Thank you, happy to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. We're so thankful that you guys... <clears throat> you guys, I, I say it like you have a monkey on your back. I don't know. <laughs> we're thankful that you reached out to us and um, we're so willing to share your story. And I I love when we connect with other people who are who are doing something similar than, you know, to Scott and I, where you are sharing your own stories on your podcast. And so um, real quick, can we learn a little bit more about you and about your podcast, what you do and you know, just, just a little, a little preview of who Nathan is. Yeah, definitely. So I was, I was born and raised in California and I was telling Scott shortly before we jumped on here, just that uh, about a few, three years ago, I moved to Idaho Falls just to be closer to family. And yeah, it was kind of at the, the beginning of the pandemic, just change of scene, I guess. I don't know, but but yeah, that's a, just a little about where I'm from, but in terms of the podcast, so my buddy Max and I, we have the Called to Serve podcast and we've been doing it for about two and a half years, just interviewing people, whether they're preparing for or recently returned home from a mission, just awesome. to to kind of, yeah, just to build that platform where people can just learn from each other, build on each other's experiences. And it's been, it's been great. Just and, and I know both you and Scott, I'm sure you, you both know just the, the inspiration that can come by interviewing another person. I don't know. I just some days, you know, I, I don't want to interview someone on the podcast, but then I, I go ahead and I do it. And it's just so inspiring, just life changing almost in some cases. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. just amazing. Yeah. I was just I was talking to my um, sister-in-law today about our podcast. And she's like, when I watch it, it's like a shot of faith in the arm. Mm. Right. And I like I that because, yeah, you know, like we, we go through life and we do have our own faith building experiences, but they're not they're like sporadic. Right. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about doing a podcast is you can have something every week or, you know, right. or whenever you listen to one. So you can have those. It's almost like you're getting that experience um, through, you know, through someone else's experience right yeah. like you're you're there with them um and it's just it's a cool thing just to have yeah. that constant shot of faith <clears throat> yeah i agree and i think it's funny too because because part of my role on this show is just to sort of um get a little dose of each of the story beforehand so we kind of have an idea of what we're what we're going to hear about and i never get to hear all of it and i like it that way but it's so interesting when I do hear all of it and, and all the pieces are put together. And um, and I think a lot of times, too, as people are sharing their story, they'll remember these other things that had happened that maybe they wouldn't have shared had we had that conversation over the phone, you know, because because the spirit is here and it really does help. I, I don't know. It just it helps to guide the whole story along. And so anyway, long story short. <laughs> We love it. It is super fun, but the world needs more good podcasters. So I think, I guess technically we joined you if you've been doing this for two and a half years. You didn't join us, but that's okay because we're way older than you. So I think we just get that level of experience. It's like, what's it? Evens it? Age before beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so we just get, we just get to be first. <laughs> no, but, but the world really does need more of this. It needs more um, members of the church and, and, and fellow Christians, even, you know, even outside of the church and stuff, it needs more good to be readily accessible and, and able to be listened to and watched and, and felt. So thank you for your contributions to that. We appreciate it. Yeah, no, I mean, 
Hey, right back, right back at both of you. I really appreciate <laughs> what you're doing here with this. I think it's, I think it's great. You know, just having different, I guess, just almost the idea of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I just, mm, I just love yes. that concept. And, and I really do appreciate just the people you have on the show and everything. So I like that. I think I'm going to have to start Thanks. keeping notes, making signs, bust out a cricket, start selling bumper stickers, <laughs> ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I love it. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, Nathan, um, the floor is yours, sir. Why don't you let us know where does your story begin? Well, I mean, I've always been a deep thinker, but really the story just behind or rather what the story that I wanted to share, the story behind the podcast and, and kind of where I'm at right now is just it started on a mission. And, you know, I like most people, you know, you go on the mission because, I mean, you have a you feel a sense of duty. And that's kind of where I was. at. I kind of felt a sense of duty. I, I knew it was what I, what I ought to do. I knew I, I wanted to, but it wasn't. I guess my reason for doing it wasn't as deep as it could have been. And it wasn't until I was about a year into my mission and I, I was a Spanish speaking missionary. So obviously, you know, you get to the mission field and you're speaking a foreign language. It's a bit difficult. A lot of times at first you just don't understand. And, and in my case, yeah, I didn't understand a word. Okay. Maybe a word that's, that's a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit excessive, but there, I didn't understand what people were saying in many cases. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but fast forward to about a year in, you know, language is going well, but I'm serving in El Paso, Texas. Um, the mission was Albuquerque, New Mexico, but it covered all the way down to the border of Mexico as well. Okay. But, but yeah, I was about a year into it and had a great, great companion at the time. It was awesome, but, but not much was happening. We were working super hard. We were trying to find people to teach. We were trying to build ward trust. We were being obedient. And I think at one point or another, most missionaries go through that where they feel like, Oh, I'm doing everything right. Why is nothing happening? Or why does it seem like nothing's happening? But it's easy to get discouraged when things like that happen. And I got pretty discouraged, nothing crazy, but just, mm -hmm. just discouraged, you know, like mm -hmm. the wind was kind of let out of the sails oxygen out of the tank, however you want to say it. <laughs> uh -huh. But somehow word got around. I think, I think I emailed my sister or something and she was friends with one of my previous college roommates. But anyways, I got a letter and in it, one of my previous, or one of my roommates from, from BYU, Idaho, which I had attended previously, he said, Hey, Nate, you had great reasons for going on a mission, but now it's time you got to figure out why you're going to stay on the mission. Why are you going to finish? Mm -hmm. And when I read that, it just kind of hit me. I, I had considered previously why I had gone, but, but why I was going to stay or why, I guess the concept of my why being almost a living thing where they needed to be nourished and almost fed, I guess on a, on a normal mm -hmm regular basis what didn't really i didn't that never crossed my mind previously it was a new concept and right. and pretty much after after i read that i just kind of decided okay well you know if this is going to get better i've got to do something about it and so i decided no better time than the present let's figure out why i'm going to stay let's figure out because i'm i'm not i'm not going home i'm not throwing in the towel although it, I did want right. to at times. So yeah, I just, after a little while, I, it, it took some time. It took some work for sure. You know, praying, studying, actively soul searching, trying to figure out why is elder Gavundian here still on the mission? You know, why is elder Gavundian going to stay and why does that matter? You know, wow. but it, Eventually, I came across a talk by President Nelson. It was from the April 2019 General Conference. It's titled, Come Follow Me. And in it, he shares the experience that he had, uh, that he and his sister Nelson went to Paradise, California, whenever they were having those crazy fires over there. Yeah. 
but he shared an experience speaking with one of the first responders, one of the police officers who was obviously out there helping people during all the, all the fires and the emergency situation. While the first responder was out there, he, he shared the question that was kind of going through his mind was where's my family. Mm-hmm. And that, whenever I, I read that or listened to that, I think I was actually, I think I was mopping the floor. I remember listening to it. I was mopping the floor. It wasn't a preparation and my companion was sick that day. And so we were, we couldn't really go out cause he was, yeah, he was sick. But, but I remember, yeah, I was mopping the floor and I was just listening to president Nelson. I was just like, wow, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. And that's it just, you know, kind of marinating in my mind, just thinking about that. I was like, you know, that's, that's my why. That's why I'm out here. That's why I'm going to stay is because I've got, you know, I'm sealed to my family already. You know, I've, I'm, right. I'm very blessed to have that. But so many people are not. So many people don't have that luxury, I guess you could say, or that, that privilege, that blessing to be sealed. Right. And a lot of them don't even know it's a possibility. So I just, I just thought I was like, you know, that's, that's my why that's why I'm going to stay. And and that really did fuel me. And I, I guess the way I like to, I guess the picture I like to, to, to draw for this is, I don't know if anyone that's listening or, or if either of you have watched Looney Tunes with Daffy Duck when he's <laughs> yep. just mm-hmm. bouncing off the walls. Yeah, we're that's that kind old. of. <laughs> yeah, we probably watched a lot more of that than you. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah, I mean, probably. <laughs> I had but that's the kind of the... shirts that I would double up, roll up my two sleeves. It's a, it was a whole thing. Okay, so sorry. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's just the image that you know, Daffy Duck kind of bouncing off the walls, <clears throat> crazy, energetic. That was just you know, before I found out my why, I was just kind of. Like I said, kind of just discouraged, a bit low on energy, exhausted. Mm. But after I figured it out, I was just like, man, nothing, nothing's going to stop me. I'm just, I'm going. And it was just almost like Daffy Duck just bouncing off the walls. So that's, wow. that's kind of the the picture I like to put. Cause it was, it really was night and day, the difference. Mm-hmm. But fast forward a little bit and the pandemic hits and I returned home about six weeks early. I call it, I was part of the, well, I was part of the COVID offload is what I like to call it. Just oh, one of those, okay. um, cause I didn't, I didn't have any health problems or anything like that. I just, I was, I think they, they just sent a lot of the elders home that were out 21 months or more. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was within that range. So sent home just a little bit early and like most people, when they return home from a mission, there's a bit, bit of a transition, bit of an adjustment. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I had to figure out, okay, now I'm I'm not reciting the missionary purpose every week in district council or in zone conference. What is my why now? You know, I, I mean, it's obviously I'm still a disciple of Christ. I'm still mm-hmm. still on the covenant path. Just got to figure out what's my why because I'm not going out knocking on doors. I'm not going out talking to people at the park. I'm not going out and teaching people per se, but I need to figure out what's my why and how can I still serve while being a normal civilian. Mm -hmm. But it was one morning that I was just, you know, doing typical classic scripture study, personal study, but I had an impression to create a platform where people can share all about their why for sharing the gospel and just for being a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And that's, that's kind of what led to my friend and I creating the call to surf podcast was that impression. And the reason why I wanted to focus on the why was just because for me personally, that had such a big impact on me. And, and it was kind of funny because anyone I had talked to that served a mission, they kind of knew what I was talking about in terms of when I, when I would bring up, Hey, like, did your why change from when you started to when you were kind of serving, how did that evolve? Um, but it was almost like a, 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 a different language that we were all speaking or we could speak because we, we all served missions and we just kind of understood, okay, 
Like you just, you change and your reason for doing it changes, Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I just kind of evolved into, yeah, yeah, the call to serve podcast. And that was initially the impression. And then once I kind of took a step into that, I could see the next step and the next step, almost like what Elder Bednar talks about when he, when he speaks of feeling the spirit and how a lot of times it's like a foggy day. And you can't see more than just a step or two in front of you, at least at at one time. But, but yeah, and from there, I just, you know, I felt impressed after interviewing so many people to, to write a book specifically for people either preparing for or recently returning home from a mission. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I'm at. I just, just, uh, the book's currently in the pre-order phase and it'll be launching on October 2nd. So just that's kind of the chapter where I'm in right now and just looking forward to what the future brings and we'll see what happens to the next step I take. Awesome. Well, what's the name of your cool. book? It's called finding your why, how to get the most out of your mission. Okay. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. That is like a huge Scott and I know. <laughs> yeah. That's a big, that's a big is, project. For it sure. is a big <laughs> undertaking. Yeah. I, uh, I am. I always, I always feel bad when people ask me, when are you, when's your book going to be done? I'm like, I don't know. Ask Heavenly Father. <laughs> like he just Pretty keeps, much. He keeps <laughs> adding to it. I thought that I would be done at this point, but he just gives me more words. So we're just not done yet. I don't know. But that's amazing. I So I have a, I have a couple questions and comments. Mm-hmm. First, I love how you said you have to treat your why like it's a living, breathing thing. I, I don't know why, but I'm imagining a puppy. <laughs> you know, I'm just imagining like, like this excited little puppy. And at first we think, oh, this is our why. And then as the puppy grows, you know, he, I don't know, the puppy changes too, right? Like it becomes mm-hmm. a little more, a little more steady, you know, and, and sometimes later on in life, it might slow down and might just really want the comforts in life. And so I love the imagery of just having your why be something that's, that's alive, that you have to nurture, that you have to give attention to, and that you have to be okay with it changing and shifting as, as things change and shift in your life too. Right. Because that, I think, I think sometimes we get so caught up in having to have one why for the rest of our life that we forget. That's a really long time. (laughs) That's a really long time. And things, things become more and less important to us based on our experiences. And so thank you for that. That's going on my bumper sticker cricket machine too. (laughs) But, um, but I did have a couple of questions. So one, when you felt this, this inspiration to start this podcast, let's start with that. Um, had you ever done anything like a podcast before or was it because you mentioned that your why kind of le- led you along and showed you like your next steps. So what was what was that process like, you know, just trying to figure out how the heck do you do a podcast? Yeah, it was it was a little bit of a, there was a learning curve involved for sure. I hadn't, yeah, I hadn't done a podcast or a YouTube or anything kind of like that. Right. I had, I'd considered doing something similar to that or a podcast about something for a little while, but I just wasn't sure what it was. And I think, I guess more than, more than anything, that impression was, this is what you need to do your podcast on. This is, you know, this is what I need for you or from you. Okay. And cause, cause up to that point, I, I definitely considered it. I hadn't, like I said, I hadn't done it, but at that point I was pretty set on doing something like a podcast, but I hadn't figured out the subject of what it would be. And that was, like I said, that was the impression that was just like, here, this is it. Wow. Oh, I love that. And then what about for the book too? Is that something that, I mean, had you, had you ever written a book before? Are you, you know, someone who loves writing and that does that come natural to you? Or was that something else that you kind of had to learn and grow and figure out? Well, it's kind of funny because growing up, so I was homeschooled Mm -hmm. and I definitely studied English, but it was more, I think I learned more English just by speaking properly in the home Mm -hmm. than I did on paper or in grammar lessons or whatnot. And it was funny because I returned home from the mission and I, I don't don't remember who I told this, but I remember telling this to somebody, I think 
Yeah, I, I said, I think I've studied Spanish more than I've studied English in my whole life, <laughs> just because of the language study you do on the mission. Right. And I just thought that was kind of funny because, yeah, I know more about Spanish verbs and gerunds and past tense, participle, subjunctive, all that jazz. Mm-hmm. More more about Spanish than I do English. But, but yeah. So Finding Your Why is actually my second book that I've written. My first one, I published it just a few months actually before starting the Call to Surf podcast. So it was published November of 2021. And then in January, no, my bad. Actually, no, I'm, I have my timeline incorrect here. It was, I published my book, my first book about nine months or 11 months, nine, 10 months after starting the podcast. Okay. Um, so, so I had, I believe we'd started the writing process, but hadn't published it. And, and no, I don't actually particularly like writing. At least I hadn't un- up until just a few years ago. I don't know how that, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Wow. Your yeah. little puppy Y led you along and was like, Pretty hey, much. let's go on this trail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, if you would have asked me five years ago, do you think you'll ever write a book? I was like, no. There you go. <laughs> nice. No. So for all so of Nathan- my listeners out there, if you're considering a podcast, or, or even if you're not, if you're like, I could never do that, Nathan has just proved to you that you can, and you probably should. So get on whatever it is that Heavenly Father is telling you to do and go do it. Okay. Now, Scott's turn. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to ask, when did you get the inspiration to write a book? And what was the impetus behind that project? The Finding Your Why? Yeah. It was, well, number one, we were looking for a way to get out to more people, to reach more people. And number two, we were, I say we, cause it was myself as well as my, my friend, Max, that we were, we have the, the podcast, but mm-hmm. it was also just, you reach a different audience when you write a book. Um, on, on obviously a a podcast is nice because you can, you know, you can cover a lot and you can kind of unpack certain ideas, but, but with a book, unless it's an audio book, that's kind of a different story. But with a book, most of the time you're able to really develop an idea and you kind of have a captive, I guess, for lack of a better term, a captive audience, Mm -hmm. because with a podcast, it's nice. It's nice in the fact that you can go out, I can be I can be cleaning the house. I can be washing the car. I can be doing whatever, driving to work right. and I can be listening to it and st- still having my attention on it, but somewhat divided when otherwise, you know, you have a book, a lot of times you got to sit down or, you know, just, you got to plant yourself and you got to just put yourself into it. And, and I, I just, I like that. And some people that would listen to podcasts, won't listen, won't write a book or won't read a book but people that will read a book won't necessarily always listen to a podcast. So just kind of wanting to get the word out, I guess. And that's, that's my explanation, but, but it was really just an impression. I I suppose. I don't know exactly I guess the meaning behind it, but I I do think that my first book that I wrote helps me learn a few things so that Mm -hmm. finding your why this, this book could be a lot better. Nice. That's awesome. So, so tell me as you start this podcast and you, you know, you're looking for people to do now do they? and I apologize. Um, I am not too familiar with it. I have heard of it, but I don't mm-hmm. know if I've actually listened to it yet. Um, so do you have people sharing your stories kind of like this? Do you guys have topics that you talk about? Like, how does that conversation go? And and what did that look like figuring that out? It was, again, it was a bit of a learning curve, a work in progress, but where we're at now is that generally what I like to do is the question I ask people, no matter what, hands down, if they're coming on the show, they're going to answer this is what's your why Mm -hmm. and what's your why for serving or what's your why for, for having this, social media, Instagram page where you share the gospel on, you know, and what, and what can people learn from, you You know, how, if if I'm trying to share the gospel, how can I do it? But that's the the first question is just, what's your why? But Mm -hmm. generally what I'll do 
is I'll ask them, hey, was there any, are there any certain principles or certain things that really impacted your decision to serve? And then based on their response, I'll kind of formulate a, a plan as to more or less what we'll be discussing on the podcast. Right. So that's, that's kind of what, what we do with that is just, yeah, really, we, we, we want it to be about them, about their story, just because everyone's got a, everyone's got a story. Right. That's true. It is. <laughs> we believe that too. So in your book, um, like what are some of the topics you address when you're helping somebody to find their way? Yeah. So the, the, one of the topics that we cover, and that's just kind of the, the imagery of a pyramid, how every, every layer points to the top. And if you don't have the first layer, you can't get to the second layer. If you don't have the second layer. You can't get to the third layer and you mm-hmm. know, you won't be able to obviously get to the top and everything, like I said, everything points to the top. And that's the idea behind it is just that everything points to the why. And so okay. what, what's yours basically, you know, and how are so you going to find that? And this, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go, no, you go ahead. I was just going to say it's a, it's a three part book. So the first part's for preparing the second one's just for why you're serving the last one's for after you get back, how are you going to, how are you going to keep it going essentially? Oh, I love okay. that. Yeah, that's I love cool. that. That's a really, like, I like when there's something for every stage, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. I was just thinking when you were talking about the the pyramid thing, is that, I don't know if you, have you heard of the seven, it's like seven levels deep. Scott probably knows I'm talking about for finding your why. Have you heard that? I haven't actually. Oh, I haven't heard of that, but I mean, it might be similar. It's so, and I mean, this was many moons ago that I had heard about this technique for finding your why. And I've done it a few times and it, it, um, it definitely gets the wheels turning. Right. But, um, Geez, I can't even remember who said it. I'm going to have to figure that out too. So <laughs> it was encouraged that if you're wanting to find your true why, the thing that's really, really strong and that's like deeply embedded within is you, you answer why first, you know, for example, um, you know, why do I want to lose weight? Well, because I want to look good in my clothes. And then you say, okay, why do you want to look good in your clothes? And so you keep at answering those questions, like you ask a question in regards to the previous answer that you gave and you go about seven levels deep. And once you get down to that seventh level, supposedly that is the deepest, you know, that's, that's the more, you know, well, because I want to, to live longer for my kids, you know, type of thing. So it could be something, you know, you think it's a surface, a surface why, but then the, the more you dig, right. And this is going down, not going up with your pyramid, but I love the idea of your pyramid because I feel like that just points closer to God. You know, I, I know we've always seen a lot of imagery in regards to like pyramids and like husband, wife, God, or you have like Mm -hmm. God, the father, Jesus Christ, Holy ghost. And they all point at, you know, so I love that imagery of that, but so that's not exactly the same thing necessarily it's 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 not no it's not but i I love that i think that's i think that's excellent yeah i think that's a great great thing to do for those that are trying to figure out their why okay so you mentioned for you you kind of you read scriptures and you served and you prayed about and you fasted um what would you suggest to someone especially someone who's maybe not on the mission field right because i i love that you are tailored um you have this niche right around missionaries and and recently returned missionaries and things like that. But we all have our mission, right? So essentially we all are missionaries in our own way. Mm -hmm. What's your advice for people who, you know, are kind of maybe not doing the mission thing per se in the, in the standard text of it, how would you suggest to them that they find their why? for continuing on whatever purpose it is that they have in front of them. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a similar process. Uh, I think either way you got to keep God involved in that discovery and that decision. And, you know, obviously prayer is huge. I think praying, I'm a big advocate for meditation and soul searching, just trying to figure out, you know, I guess taking the time to be still. Um, but I think it goes, it kind of goes down to, okay, 
what, how do you hear him best? Because I, I think finding your why is a very spiritual thing, regardless of if that's for, you know, why am I going to start this business? Why am I going to go to school? Why am I going to do this? Or why am I going to date this person? I think it's a very spiritual thing in any case. And so taking the time for me, cause that's how I hear him best is just being still. So, but for those that are, you know, that would be considering their why, I think you first got to figure out how do I hear him? And I, I just love that initiative that the church kind of came out with is just hear him. I, I just, I love that so much because it's, yeah. it's going to be slightly different for everyone, but, but I think it starts with that. And then it goes into, okay, put myself in that place so I can be open for revelation and then bring my journal you know, write down my revelation that I receive and just do it because I, it's really just, a, it's between you and the Lord. That's, mm-hmm. I think that's, that's in my opinion, that's your why is, you know, that's how you figure it out is you got to set aside time to spend essentially for a, a personal interview with God and just figure out, you know, what's your why. Okay. I like that because yeah. I think, you know, we get so busy in the world and in life that a lot of times we neglect spiritual things and we don't take the time to really, you know, get to the heart of the purpose of life or, you know, the important parts of the gospel that could really impact our lives because we just get too busy. Like there's been a lot of people that I've talked to, um, even family members, I'm like, have you read the Book of Mormon? <laughs> right? Like, mm-hmm. and they're they're people that that maybe aren't active in the church, right? Like, right. have you even read it? And they're like, no. I'm like, <laughs> well, how do you like? That's a problem, right? Yeah. Like, if because you're missing out on on that internal that why, right? Like, it's got to come from inside. It's got to be something that's just part of who you are. But if you never take the time to focus on spiritual things, then you can't ever get it. And so if you don't have it, how do you, how does it become part of you? Right. right? Like you mentioned, it was, it's a living thing and it is for sure. You got to spend that time to get it and then you got to nurture it once you have it. Um, but yeah, well, and it's, thoughts on that? It, it just reminds me of, what Elder Uchtdorf talked about a little while back in general conference when he talked about sharing what's in your heart and, you know, you can't share what's in your heart or at least you may not want to, unless it's good and of, you know, of God, you know, in terms of sharing the gospel. Mm-hmm. And so you like used to your point, you know, you got to have it in your heart first, then you can share it. Yeah. Yeah. And what I've noticed is, um, I, I feel like I feel like it was the millennial generation that kind of got into this like why thing, right? Like I feel like when I was a kid, we didn't care. It was like just do it. <laughs> you know, we were. I don't know. I'm yeah. So Scott, maybe more you agree ex- with external me. pressure versus it, internal it definitely, drive. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was like you just do it. Like what are you talking about? Why you know? Like feelings. Psh, we don't yeah. need feelings. But, but I love that the millennial generation has done a lot more of this in-depth soul searching. Now, sometimes to the extreme where they're just, I'm like, what? Come here. Like, you're not even on the same come field. Back. Anymore. <laughs> like, you're mm-hmm. just going great. Like, just come, like, let's do this one first. But, but I do think that the whole why thing has become very, very big in this past generation and then moving forward to our next generations that are, that are, um, you know, up and coming. Right. I think that that there's a lot of people who they need that anchor, right? If they're going to do anything, they need that anchor. And so I want to ask you, you know, you shared with us the, the why on your mission essentially was because you want families, especially your family, right. To not be lost. Like you want to know where your family is, right. That was kind of, and I might, you probably have much better wording, but how has your why changed and what's your why now? You know, yeah, that's a really good, really good question. And I think it's in a lot of ways, it's it's very similar, but it's definitely evolved. And you know, I had a thought the other day, just 
about how, you know, I think one of my greatest fears is becoming really good at something that doesn't matter. Mm. And, you know, years and not figuring out until years later. And, and I think more than anything, my why now is keeping what's most important, number one. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, that, that the family's on there, the testimony of Christ and regularly testifying of him Mm -hmm. is there. And I, I really think that's just what it comes down to, you know, just those two things of, Hey, if I can bring one person to Christ, you know, it doesn't matter how many pre-orders the book gets. It doesn't matter how many copies we sell. I just want to get it in the hands of people that need it. Yeah. And that's just from my personal experience of seeing how that helped me finding my why, you know, I just, I wish I would have thought about it before I'd gone on a mission Mm -hmm. because I mean, no, definitely wouldn't have been perfect, but would have been much better. I'm sure. But that being said, I would not be the person that I am today. If I, if I did change, we'll go back in time and change that. Right. So I don't, I don't have any regrets in that sense, but, but yeah, I'd say my why is just keeping the main thing, the main thing, the main thing is to testify of Christ and to bring as many people to him as possible. So it's similar to where is my family, you know, bringing people, families together, but it's, I'd say it's more centered on Jesus Christ now than it was. Right. Yeah. I like that. Um, Wouldn't it be, interesting if we could go back in time knowing what we know now and do our mission again <laughs> i i think that's why they have us do a senior missionary senior mission when we're older because we learn all this stuff and we're like oh, okay i get it now yeah man if i could just go back in time you know mm-hmm. just think of what i could do pretty much so. that's an interesting thought i never thought about that that's yeah i i like that scott not that i mean i you know again Back in my day, it wasn't heavily encouraged for girls to go on missions. We had to wait till we were 21. And then they were like, oh, I guess you could go if you want to, you know, like, and so I didn't serve. I didn't serve a mission or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but I love the idea of like getting a second chance when you're older or maybe even a first chance in my situation, right, yeah. you know, like yeah. I can still be preparing for my mission, even though I still have kids at home and it's going to be a hot minute before I get to that point. <laughs> You know, I think that that's, I don't know. That was good insight, Scott. I like that. I'll cricket sticker well, that too. I, oh, thanks. <laughs> I do like the the title of your book, Finding Your Why. Um, right now I have a son that I'm trying to get to go on a mission. <laughs> and I, he's, he's struggling with that, with finding his why. And I, you know, hadn't really thought about it in that phrase, but it, it totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and when you're young, it's hard. I mean, there is that point, you know, and you had one of those on your mission, um, you know, where you Mm -hmm. had to figure out that why and that internal, that thing that was going to drive you internally to keep you going and keep your faith strong. Yeah. Uh, But I know it's, I know my kid's not the only one out there, you know, it's, it happens a lot. Um, So I think your book can help a lot of people that, are yeah. trying to find that why that reason to to make that investment and find into God and and you know renew their faith find that drive. Mm-hmm. What would you say to someone who um, who doesn't know what their why is yet? Do you encourage them just to go anyway and just figure it out when you're going, or to you know be okay in waiting? Like specifically, like if they were ready, you know, if they were going to go on a mission type of thing, um, what would you, and I know every situation is different. So this is, this is not a, you don't have to feel like you're encouraging everybody. <laughs> this is yeah. what has to happen. But just, just from your experience, you know, what do you think you would, I guess, suggest to someone in that situation who, who doesn't know and who knows it's going to take a while to figure it out? I think, at least in my opinion, I think everyone should consider serving a mission. I think if you don't know your why, you probably should do do your best to discover it. 
But in the meantime, I would open those mission papers. I would take the step. I would start acting as if you're going to serve because what's the worst thing that happens, you know, is that you act as if you're going to serve and then, oh, you decide to get married instead. Okay. Well then you're still ready. You're still temple worthy. You know, you're still right. on the covenant path. You're still heading in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I would say, you know, you know, the mission's not for everyone and that's fine. You know, they, now they have more opportunities for service. You know, they have service missionaries and different things like that opportunities, but I, I don't think it's a bad thing for anyone to not only consider, but, but to just move in that direction to take action. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, so many people I interview on, on my podcast, because I like to ask them, Hey, what's, are there any particular scriptures or scripture stories that have inspired you? Mm-hmm. And I'll, so many of them say Nephi, the story of Nephi, just the first in first Nephi. And, and it's just, I think there's a reason why it resonates with so many people. And that's because Nephi was a young person who in, in a lot of cases didn't, didn't know for sure what he was supposed to do but he followed revelation and he just kind of went for it and he was guided. And, and I think a lot of times that's kind of what you have to do as a young person, because you know, you don't have as much perspective as you will, you know, 20, 30 years from now, but, but those years are going to pass anyway. So might as well take a jump or take a, take a leap now and just start learning. So that's what I would say, that's what I would say. Just just take action and just I think I think anyone and everyone should serve or if if they don't serve should at least consider it. Mm-hmm. I really love that. Like a lot. <laughs> I you know, I um I have two teenage boys and they're um 15 and almost 17 and so they're kind of they're coming up on that like hey, they need to be thinking about missions and things like that. And, um, and my husband, he, he didn't join the church until 13 years after we were married. So he didn't serve a traditional LDS mission, but he did serve a, um, a short three month teen mission with, um, the other church that he was a part of. And so in our family, um, my boys, hopefully, you know, will be the first traditional two year missionaries. Right. Um, and that's, that's all of my family. Like my, my parents were first generation LDS. And so none of us went on missions. They didn't go on missions. Um, and I, I often have these conversations with them and I'm, I'm just kind of like, I don't want to be the mom that forces them. I never, ever want to be that. Like, I want to respect that it, it, they'll be adults and it's their life, but I do want to encourage them and I want to keep that conversation going. So in our conversations, I'm always asking them, you know, like, so where are you at? Like in regards to your mission and how do you feel about it today? And how do you, you know, so it's, it's kind of like a ongoing conversation, but I have, I have one who he had his own moment, um, at boys camp actually, where he kind of gained his testimony of the importance of serving a mission. So he's ready. And he's like, he has a whole plan and he's just, he's, it's just a part of him. He's like, there's no question. And then I have another one who's like, yeah, I think I'll go. But he, um, he's a deeper thinker in a lot of, in a lot of ways. He's more like, but I don't know, you know, like, I don't want to just, I don't want to just go. And, you know, like, I don't know if my testimony is strong enough all the time. And, Mm -hmm. and yet he is the doer when it comes to gospel related things, you know, like he is the one who is, making sure he's getting up and getting ready for church and he wants to be there early and he loves serving the sacrament and he works with missionaries and he'll go on splits with them or not splits, but whatever it is when, you know, when the youth go along and, um, and he wants to be the first one to show up to the dances and he's going to seminary. And so he's like, he's the action oriented one. And my other son is more of like, Meh. but, he, <laughs> but his testimony is like, just, solid. So he, I feel like almost like he doesn't feel like he needs to work for it. Right. Like he's like, Oh, I've already got it. I'm good. You know? Um, <clears throat> so I love your advice. I love, you know, just to do, cause I think it really does fit for both situations for those who have their testimony, have their why. And for those who are still open to receiving it. And, and I, I, 
have a love hate relationship with that word, like being open minded, right? Like sometimes I'm like, I've said this before. <laughs> sometimes you can be so open minded that your brain falls out, and we don't want that. Right? <laughs> you know, got to have some There's borders. A sticker. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's going to be our next business, Scott. We'll just go into the bumper sticker okay, business. Okay. <laughs> so. I, well, I liked your answer because I like the the faith part of it. Faith mm-hmm. to find your why. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes if you don't have the why, you still need to exercise your faith to find it. Mm-hmm. And you have to take those steps in the dark, um, knowing that God's going to be there to light your path as you take them. And I think taking those steps to put your papers in and having faith that God will guide you will help you find your why along the way for sure. So I really like your answer yeah. as well. And, and I love not having that pressure of, Oh, if I put my papers in, then I have to go. No, you can change your mind. It's okay. You know what I mean? Like it really is okay. You can go a little later if you need to, or <clears throat> go, you know, like you said, go get married or do something. But as long as you're doing something and you're staying on that covenant path, you're not going to be able to, to stray so far that it ends up being this whole <clears throat> extensive long journey back, you know, like you can kind of, who was it? Uh, my dad, he said that he had a Bishop once that said, you know, if you imagine the covenant path, just being like this straight skinny little road, he's like, if, if you can't walk straight, right at least try to cross it often. <laughs> you know, he's like, you might, you might look like you're like, you're a little drunk, but at least try to cross it, <laughs> you know? And I loved that imagery. Cause I'm like, yeah, just, just keep it there somewhere. <laughs> just do something and keep moving forward. <laughs> There's another one, another bumper sticker. There you go. We're coming up with That's all the on this one. That's going to be our next. <laughs> yeah. You're, are you writing, are you writing all this stuff you down? Can't go straight. Can't go straight, <laughs> cross it every once in a while. Right. <laughs> That's very true. So what do you, I don't know, I guess I'm kind of interested in, in what are some of the whys that you've heard on your show that have kind of like given you new perspective? Are there any? I guess. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about this one. Let's see. Stand out. I think the ones that... Yeah, that is a deep one. I think the the whys that really impact me are when I guess and this is I don't know if this is coincidence or not, but just the ones that are where people they went through something really hard and then they kind of gained more meaning from it. I guess. So there's not not necessarily a specific one. Um but just, yeah, whenever there was a, a, a trial or hardship they went through, whether that was medically or in the family, but there was something they they had to go through for it. And there was actually a, 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 a one just came to mind was this this elder I interviewed. And his story is actually going to be posted on our podcast in the next couple I think it might I think this week actually. But he initially, so he started his mission over in South America, I think it's Argentina, but Mm -hmm. he got super sick, super bad infection. And he had to be sent home and his doctors were basically telling him like, yeah, if you would have come home a day or two later, we probably would have been come. We probably would have come home in a body bag because you wouldn't have made it. And, and so he didn't actually, eventually he, he never went back to South America to finish his mission there but he is serving now as an interpreter translator and teacher in the MTC and in that Utah County area. And just hearing his, his why and his story was just so powerful. It was just like, Holy cow, this guy's nice. been through a lot. And yeah, I don't know. I just think certain just experiences and stories like that just inspire me because mm-hmm. I'm just like, wow. If you can go through that and do all that and and still have so much faith in Christ, like, like, why can't I, you know, on my low days, I guess, you know, why can't I just move a mountain? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's crazy. 
I like to refer to those people as the modern day scripture heroes, you know, like the, the ones where when you look at it, you're like, wow, like they really could have their very own book of <laughs> so-and-so, you know what I mean? Cause that's what it is in the scriptures, right? It's tons of stories about people who make bad choices or have horrible things happen to them or have these big challenges that are placed in front of them. And then they're their journey to finding that faith, finding their own whys, right? And being able to <clears throat> to overcome and hopefully draw closer to the Lord and then and then teach that to others. I think that's kind of always always been like the common theme with scripture heroes. So that's cool. I was just thinking, um, we're gonna have to get you connected with Elijah Lee. He, I think, would be a great person to have on your show. I don't know if you've heard his episode yet, but you'll have to go. Go find that one because he yeah. was. Yeah, I'll go check it out. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, Nathan. This was like so enlightening. I really, really appreciate you hopping on and and sharing your story with us and sharing your insights. Um, before we officially go, is there anything that you'd like to leave with our listeners today? Any last words? Yeah, I just wanted to share just the importance I guess, of, of just going through the motions (laughs) because, and this is might seem contradictory, but, but sometimes when you don't know your why, all you can do is go through the motions and do all you can do to find your why. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going through the motions, then it's just not going to mean as much. And it kind of goes back to what, what Christ said in the book of John, where he said, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. And so you've got to do, you've got to do something. You've got to act. And even if you don't know it off the bat, the faith that you're putting forth to act is going to just speak volumes. And it reminds me of a quote actually from Martin Luther, Martin Luther King. And he shares just that, you know, if you can't fly, run, if you can't run, walk, if you can't walk, crawl, but whatever you do, keep moving forward. And so sometimes you're going to fly. Some days you'll fly. Some days you'll crawl. Some days you'll just inch forward. (laughs) But as long as we're moving forward, then that's what God cares about. Just wants us to become better than we were yesterday. And I think just for me, finding your why, it just makes it so much easier. But again, it's a process. So just be patient. I love that. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much again. This has been this has been a really uplifting episode. I normally I turn into a crybaby and I feel like it's really nice to not have to cry. <laughs> it's really nice just to smile through the whole thing and just be like, "Wow." <laughs> oh, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. But yeah, I love yeah. I love all of your insight. And what was the name of your first book? I I meant to ask. Yeah, you're going to like the name. It's called Open-Minded Education. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I assume, is this more about homeschooling, your first book? It, it, it was, and just about just about fo- following what you want to do. Don't let okay. you know the stereotypes and what people normally do drag you down, but just figure out what you want to do. Meet people who have done something similar and just go for it. Okay. Awesome. And then you said your books are going to be available for purchase. Well, your first one already is. And by the time that we air this recording, your second one should maybe be out by then. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is it Amazon or is there another one? Yeah, just on on Amazon. And if they, yeah, if they follow us on Instagram, then just follow the link in the bio. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. We'll add, we'll add a link to your post here so people can find it for sure. Mm-hmm. And then your podcast is call, called to serve podcast, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. okay. So there you guys go. Now you guys have another great podcast that you can go listen to for all of our listeners. I know it's a long stretch between ours. It's like a whole week in between ours. And so there's lots of room for lots of different podcasts that are going to help build your faith and inspire you and motivate you and help you to find your why. So. Give you a shot of faith in the arm. Exactly. (laughs) 
Well, Nathan, thank you again for coming on here. Thank you for all you do to spread light to the world and for being so willing to be open and and just a really positive force. Like I'm really excited to be able to hear more about your podcast and to read your books and um, very interested in seeing what you're going to do next, what your little puppy Y is going to take you to do next. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Alicia. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely feel like a kindred spirit. Um mm-hmm. And we really appreciate, yeah, and I'm sure our paths will cross again. So, hundred percent, yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for you today. Please be sure to comment below. Let us know. Scott and I would love to know what your why is for sharing the gospel. What your why is for doing what it is that you do in your life. Um, let us know what that is and, and let us know what your favorite part of Nathan's um, story and his show was. We, we, we just love hearing feedback from our listeners. And then, guys, get into motion right? Do something, do your little five second missionary work and hit that share button. Make sure that you get Nathan's story out there to the rest of the people. Um, if you guys have a story that you would like to share something that can instill faith, invite growth or inspire others, we would love to hear from you. Please be sure to either drop us a comment, send us an email or head over to latterdaylights.com. There's a form at the bottom of the page that you guys can fill out. Um, giving us your information everything like that we can get in touch with you and and we can hear your story next so with that scott anything else nope thanks again nathan and thanks everyone for watching and we will talk to you next week Till then take care we'll see you